What's Shake and Fire Nation? JLD here, and welcome to EO Fire, where I chat with entrepreneurs who are on fire. And today's featured guest is Evie Jones. Evie, are you prepared to ignite? I am so ready, John. Yes. <laughs> Evie is a best selling children's book author who has made it her mission to help aspiring children's book authors write, illustrate, publish, and market their own high quality story that celebrates children's adorably unique traits and interests. So, Evie, take a minute, fill in some gaps from that intro, and give us just a little glimpse of your personal life. Yes. Thank you so much for this introduction, John. Wow. You know, if someone were to glimpse into my life right now, they'd probably see me building Lego castles with my two boys or, <laughs> you know, picking up Play-Doh cl- Play clumps from the floor so that the little one won't eat it. And then during nap time, you'd see me putting up my fancy three panel room divider behind my desk chair, you know, to hide my living room so I can go um, on video calls with aspiring children's book authors I'm coaching, teaching them what I do myself at night when everyone else is sound asleep you know, my husband included, which is writing my own children's books, of which I have authored more than a dozen so far. And so my husband, he always, um, he always likes to joke that my German focus and discipline surpasses that, (laughs) the military, you know, I mean, you've been in the military, John. So, um, you know, that as a military family, you move quite often, you know, and for us, that has been about um, 12 times these past 19 years. And so it's a bit tricky to create a career as a military spouse. And um, I didn't, want to let myself be defined by my circumstances or by my by my husband's work and so I realized I needed something that could adjust to our ever-changing lives you know and that I could take with me wherever we went and so after I successfully published a number of children's books and you know after more and more people asked me to help them to do the same um, I decided to help other aspiring children's book authors write their own with the help of my uh, best-selling book and along with my one-on-one coaching program and my upcoming online program as well. I'm pretty fired up because Fire Nation, Evie's an incredible example of somebody who niched down. And you always hear me talking about niching down and niching down till it hurts. You need to actually start in that area where you can like be the best. And I can tell you that e- that Evie has really done that for herself. She didn't just say, hey, I want to help authors write books, like this very broad, vague topic. She says, you know what? I'm going to really niche down into children's authors who are writing books. And that's my area of expertise. And by my, I mean Evie's, of course, because she's written now 12 books in this area. She understands the rope. She knows how to get it done. And that's where she's focusing on. And guess what? Maybe a year or two years from now, she's broadened out into more things and she's doing other things than just children's authors. But right now, she is niching down into that. She's going to build up that momentum, learn a ton, and then she's going to go from there, take that one step at a time. And so on that note, Evie, let's hear about your area of expertise and then give us Fire Nation just one value bomb that's, you know, we probably should know in that area that we probably don't. Right. Well, so I help people turn a magical spark of an idea into a fully realized story that can inspire children's imaginations and um, boost their confidence. And I do this for people who want to write books for two-year-olds all the way to middle grade chapter books. And something most don't know or realize is that before writing and illustrating a children's book, you know, or before the product creation for entrepreneurs in general, you should first validate your idea or your book's topic and also know the target audience you're writing the book for or creating your product for. So defining your audience is key, you know, because in my case, a book written for a four-year-old will differ from a book written for a seven-year-old, right? And so with children's books, it's also important to keep in mind that while the book is for a child, you know, it's usually purchased by a grown up. So your book will have to essentially appeal to two different audiences, the buyer and then the user. So always ask yourself, who's the buyer and who's the user of your product or service? You know, is it one and the same person? And so I always tell my clients um, to be sure not to create something hoping others will just find it and then buy it. You know, instead, always write and create with the reader already in mind. And so this really applies to all types of entrepreneurial undertakings, you know, really know whom you're planning to sell to and, you know, take the time to understand what their needs are even before you create your product or your service. So I have one specific question because you live in this world. What would you say if you could just go with your gut instinct here 
is the most successful children's book at this moment? Like, what's the most successful children's book right now? For older ones, it would be Harry Potter for sure. What about for maybe like under six years old, like maybe even like five and under? Five and under. Oh, I love uh, the Llama Llama books are huge still. And the Little Brew truck. is (laughs) So when I think about that, um, for me, for my childhood, there's two books that really jump out. And that's Where the Wild Things Are. That book to me was like part of my childhood. And then the other one was The Giving Tree. Have you ever read the book The Giving Tree? Yes, yes. Shel Silverstein, I believe, is the author's name. And what I, I'm almost positive, don't quote me on this, but I think she's from Maine. Like, I think that was a big reason why it was such a big uh, book in my house, because she was like a Maine author, which is pretty cool. Now, there's a book I kind of want to maybe talk about real quick, because I just feel like I see it. You know, my sister has a six-year-old and a three-year-old, and I've heard this on like different Netflix shows that I've been listening. They talk about this book, Hello Moon. And so what's... What is the reason why Hello Moon became such a popular children's book? It's like I open it up and I look at it, and it's so simple. I mean, it's beautifully simplistic. I mean, that's probably one of the reasons. But like, yeah. why does a book like Hello Moon, why did it crush it? No, yeah, it's exactly that because it's simple. It's simple and um, it's it's simple for the kids, and it's it also appeals to the parents because of its message. So I think that's why it's crushing it because when they wrote the book, they had both in mind, they had, again, the, the, the reader that is reading the book and, and purchases the book and also the child in mind. So I think that's definitely why. See, that's so true. I hadn't thought about that. But Fire Nation, that's why you've got to you know, talk with people like Evie, who are the best in their field on this when you want to go down these different roads. Because, you know, of course, the parent who's buying it wants, A, the child to love it, because otherwise the child is never going to want to read the book. But B, they if you can combine a great message as well, like, how great is that? And I think there's another book that kind of always makes me chuckle, but it's like, everybody poops or like something like that. And it just kind of talks about that. I'm like, that's brilliant. <laughs> like, that's just such a good book because, you know, it's a great message that parents want to get through their kids and they get, right. want their kids to be comfortable with it. And the kids love it because it's kind of funny and they giggle and they laugh. And you have to have that, that one, two punch combo. So, I mean, is that kind of one of the things you really drill into some of your students? Yes. Yes. That's definitely something I'm, I'm striving towards, um, to teach them that. So good. I love that. Well, we're going to shift now, Evie, into your entrepreneurial journey. I mean, like you said, you know, you travel around so much, you know, being a military wife. And, you know, thank you for that, by the way. Myself, being in the military, I just know how important of a role that you play. It's just so huge that, you know, we have the support system in place for families and for wives and for and for just that whole situation as you're moving from base to base to base. But what would you say to date is your worst entrepreneurial moment, that entrepreneurial moment that you just say, man, that was the lowest of the low so far. Yes. Wow. You know, so the worst moment I've had in my business came after uh, working my butt off, you know, creating a name for myself. Uh, You know, besides writing my children's books, I used to also create book trailers for other authors. And for those that have never heard of book trailers before, um, they are just like movie trailers, but for books. So it's a 60 second clip advertising um, new books, essentially. So book trailers, you know, they take a lot of work. Um, and a lot of time to make. And I I have to convey the essence of the book within less than a minute. So that requires an extensive interview of the author. And then I have to create a concept and find or create just the right footage before I can sit down and start the actual production process. And so this piece essentially represents months, if not years of this author's work, right? So this, this trailer has to represent uh, just that, or it has to represent it just right. And so I was producing these trailers for best selling authors, you know, big names in their genres like Nicholas Sansbury Smith and Deborah Webb and James Hankins. And I also worked with publishing houses and created trailers for their authors. And, you know, in true German fashion, I would make sure those trailers were pristine. You know, <laughs> I poured. I poured over every little detail to make sure what I delivered was perfect. And so over the years, I had really made a name for myself within the author community. And I had, um, and had I wanted to keep going down this path, I very easily could have, you know, I was already consistently booked two to three months out in advance. But, you know, to keep up with the demand, I would have had to clone myself, really. You know, the trailer workload just became too much. And I wouldn't uh, go to bed until 1am, you know, and then I would 
wake up again at five. And, you know, my, my waiting list would just grow longer and longer. And I had less and less time to spend, um, you know, with my two boys and with my husband. And I had no time to write my own books anymore. And, you know, I loved seeing my business grow because it was something I created, you know, out of nothing. And but but I also realized that this wasn't something that was scalable. And coming to this realization was was horrible. You know, I was heartbroken to realize that I wasn't able to keep up with its growth. And, you know, all the hard work I put into creating an amazing name for myself felt like um, it suddenly halted to a huge stop. And now I had to make a choice. And it was the worst moment ever to to know that what I had created wasn't going to work anymore. And I had to end, you know, my business. And I felt like such a failure, even though I had built something really incredible, you know, but, but getting over that sense of failure definitely took some time. And so, you know, my, my, the number one takeaway for me from that was sometimes we just have to take a step back, you know, to be able to move forward. And yes, it was hard to leave this thriving business behind, but you know, in the end, it just wasn't sustainable. And so we just have to learn to let go sometimes, even though it's hard. Fire Nation, my biggest takeaway from this is balance. I mean, we all want success in this world. We do, but at what cost? Like at what cost are you willing to give up for that success? And then it doesn't make it that, that success even worth it when you get to that point. And like hearing Evie's story and how much love she has for her kids and playing Legos with them and, you know, just getting to spend time and tuck them in at night and then having to trade that, you know, for, you know, what she wanted, which was to create something out of nothing and have great success on the left hand side here. You know, you got to balance that. Like, what do you really want? And that's why, you know, continuously staying in touch with your wants, your needs and desires. And I do that every day by meditation, by journaling to check in, put my finger on the pulse. Just make sure as you're moving forward, as you're moving towards success, you're doing it in a very balanced way. If you can just always have that word balance, you're balancing business, life, health, those that mean the most to you. I mean, at what cost are you willing to to give up for success? Think about that. And I want to just echo Evie's point Take a step back to move forward sometimes. It's not a bad thing to take a step back to move forward. Now, Evie, we're going to take a step forward into an aha moment. You've had a lot of great ideas. I mentioned how much I love your niching down into just focusing on children's book authors. Somebody might have come along and said, but Evie, what about all the other authors who aren't children's book authors and now you can't serve them because you're not marketing to them? And, you know, Obviously, we're going to give them a virtual backslap right now because that's how you lose in this world, Fire Nation, by not niching and focusing and becoming the best in your area. What is one of those great moments that you want to share with our audience, Fire Nation? Take us there. Yes. Okay. So, you know, when I was younger, I uh, didn't really fit in like so many of us. You know, when I was growing up, uh, former East Germany, where I'm originally from, was a uh, very homogenous society. And back then we had uh, Vietnamese guest workers come into our country. And it just so happened that my mom fell in love with one of them. You know, now now contact between nationals and these guest workers was strongly discouraged. So you know, their relationship and me as a result of it was something highly, highly frowned upon and criticized even. And so as the only non-white girl in my entire town and my entire school, it wasn't, you know, exactly easy. You know, the parents of my friends, they wouldn't let them play with me because they were worried people would start talking. And, you know, I was watched with suspicion whenever I went into a store. People can be really mean without realizing it, you know, and that that whole experience left me feeling um, inadequate and, and different and just alone sometimes. And so as a little girl, I created my own little world with books because I was able to identify with the characters. I, I could imagine being with them and having fun with them. And I felt safe. And, and this is uh, this make believe world. I felt loved and accepted. And I want all children to feel this way. You know, I want them all to feel accepted and loved, especially when uh, people in their world might not be loving toward them. So this is where I had my big aha moment. This is why I started writing. I mean, you know, what better way to reach and influence the lives of little little ones? And so this is also why I want to empower others to bring uh, books to children that provide a world of acceptance and love by helping them write their own stories. I want to help others use their own experiences and their 
their own circumstances to influence children's lives in an incredible and positive way. And what I've learned from aspiring authors is that they too want to write a book to help children develop into confident little souls. And many of them were also trying to heal parts of their own childhood that didn't go well. So my own personal approach changed. And it isn't just about the technical parts of how to write a children's book anymore. You know, I encourage people to write books that celebrate children's adorably unique traits and interests that, you know, in turn, lets a child's confidence soar. So my, my biggest takeaway from this aha moment is, you know, let your passion and your experiences drive and shape what you offer. And that's what caused me to start writing my own children's books. And that's what others ask me to help them uh, with, you know, and while well, I thought people just wanted my help with the technical parts of writing a children's book. My clients showed that they wanted to go deeper into that. And, and I listened. Sometimes, you know, our greatest ideas are the most obvious and not necessarily the most profound. And I'm so, so thankful I listened. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here talking to you right now. I think you put that so beautifully. I just want to echo that for you, Fire Nation, is let your passions and experience shape and drive what you offer. I mean, just think about that. We all have passions. We all have experience. We all have curiosities. Like We all have these things that have shaped us as human beings. Let those passions and let that experience shape and drive what you offer going forward. An offer could be, you know, what are you putting onto the world via content, via podcast, via blogs, via social media, video, whatever it might be you know, let your passions and experience shape and drive that going forward and just see what the next step unfolds. And, you know, just to kind of end on a quote real quick, the Martin Luther King quote that I love, you don't have to see the whole staircase to take the next step. Just let your passions and experience shape that next step for you and see what is uncovered from that point going forward. So Evie, you are understandably are pretty excited about a number of things right now. I mean, you've niched down into an area that you love, that you know that you're great at. What has you most fired up today? Yes. Uh, thanks so much for asking, John. You know, I'm, I'm most excited about my upcoming course in my children's book university that will help um, aspiring children's book authors uh, with finding an incredible story idea and with the illustration process and the publishing and the marketing, you know, all with step by step video instructions that will actually showcase me how I'm creating an entire book. So the student will see each step uh, with an actual example that in the end will be published. So they'll see the actual launching process as well. And so, you know, in the meantime, folks can use my best selling book, you know, how to self publish a children's book that was just published and that will guide you through the entire process also. And it's exciting because it's currently listed right next to books by Hal Elrod and Ooh. Chandler Bull, whom I know you know, and Joanna Penn, you know, people I'm a big fan of and that are big names within the author community. So, you know, I've helped aspiring authors from all walks of life in a one-on-one -on -one setting, you know, from lawyers, neuroscientists and filmmakers, you know, all the way to moms and dads and uh, grandparents even you know, at all stages of their writing careers. And so with my upcoming course in my children's book university and my book, you know, I'm now able to help even more achieve their dream of becoming a children's book author. And so I'm really, really excited about, about that. Where can we find out more about your children's university? Um, that would be eviejones.com. That's eevijones.com. eviejones.com, Fire Nation. And of course, her book, how to self-publish your children's book. And I love the title because I say, Fire Nation, be clear and clever. But if you have to choose between the two, just be clear. And there's nothing more clear than how to self-publish your children's book. Nailed it. And Fire Nation, we're about to crush the lightning round. So don't you go anywhere. We'll be right back after we thank our sponsors. Looking for a website that can help you crowdsource design projects quickly and easily? Whether you're looking for custom graphics, a new logo, or even a brand new web design, Design Crowd has you covered. All you have to do is post a brief describing the design you need. Then Design Crowd will invite its designers to respond. Within hours, you'll receive your first design. And over the course of three to 10 days, a typical project will receive 60 to 100 plus different designs. Finally, you then get to pick the best design and approve payment to the designer. And if you don't find a design you like, no worries. Design Crowd has a money back guarantee and a support team that you can contact by phone or email 24-7 to help. Get started today. Visit 
visit designcrowd.com slash fire for a special $100 VIP offer for Fire Nation or simply enter the discount code FIRE when posting your next project on Design Crowd. That's D-E-S-I-G-N-C-R-O-W-D dot com slash fire. Evie, are you ready to rock the lightning rounds? I am so ready. What was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? What was holding me back was my mindset and believe that an author couldn't be an entrepreneur. You know that authors and entrepreneurs must remain two separate entities. What's the best advice you've ever received? Well, a wise man named John once told me that (laughs) writing children's books is my bullet, but that the journey of how I got to where I am today is my gun. And he's taught me that I have a story to tell that can help others find their way to where they need to go. Okay, maybe expound upon that a little bit because that really was good advice. So what do you mean by that? Because I do love that analogy. I asked you, I had a hard time. I said, how can I tie um, my, my story into all of this, you know, how, how is that relevant? And so he said, well, you know, children's books, writing this, yes, it's important. This is your bullet, but you know, what really drives the, the, the thing home for people is your actual story. Mm. You know, you, how you got to where I am today. Fire Nation. So true. How can you utilize that in your life? What's a personal habit, Evie, that contributes to your success? Yes, I always um, create external accountability whenever I work on something. You know, I'm so very driven by external influences. And that's really best explained by Gretchen Rubin's four tendencies. You know, I'm an obliger, which means I'm driven by um, outer expectations. So what helps me achieve my goals and helps me create success is to um, create external accountability systems like, um, you know, be it in a Facebook be it a Facebook post, you know, announcing that I will do this or that by a certain date or, you know, just joining a mastermind that meets regularly online to discuss what what I'll be working on. You know, these are all things that um, help me stay focused and reach my goals. Recommends one internet resource. Yes, that's easy. For me, that's um, Dave Chesson's KDP Rocket, which is essentially a Kindle keyword software that, you know, besides its many other features, helps you find um, profitable keywords you can use for your book on Amazon. Now, I want to recommend one book or have you recommend one book, Evie, and of course, Fire Nation, to join How to Self-Publish Your Children's Book on your bookshelves if it's relevant for you. What is that book, Evie? The book I would like to recommend is by Dr. Gladys Otto, and it's called The Good Goodbye. And it's fantastic. You know, it's changed the way I am letting go of my uh, limiting beliefs that come through with the, you know, imposter syndrome and all that is, that is holding me back. And so it's essentially asking, you know, what if, what if the secret to an amazing, fulfilled life isn't being able to get what you want, but, you know, instead being able to effectively say goodbye to Um, to what you've lost or what you had to let go of. And so this book's framework helps you successfully adapt to any life changes and it turns disappointment into acceptance and gratitude. You know, it enables you to embrace new experiences to create the amazing life we all deserve. Well, Evie, it's been so awesome to see you, you know, transform from when you started our mastermind to where you're at now. You're just plain and simply an action taker. And I bet it is a lot of that German discipline you have in you. You just, you get stuff done. I mean, you have two young boys. So Fire Nation, you know, we all have all these cues in the world. I mean, I have all these cues in the world. Believe me, I use them every day and I try to get out of my own way as well. But just recognize that you can make this happen. Evie, I I saw her at the beginning. I've seen her transition. I've seen her make it happen. It's been so exciting to see. And now here she is on Entrepreneurs on Fire, rocking the mic. So Evie, why don't you end with a parting piece of guidance, the best way that we can connect with you, and then we'll say goodbye. Yes. Okay. So if you want to do something, don't wait. Don't wait for the right moment. You know, don't wait until your kids are older or or until your email list is bigger or until your website is just right. You know, start now and believe in yourself and start now. You know, one of my favorite quotes by is by Goethe, where he says, whatever you dream, you can do. Begin it. Boldness has genius, power and magic in it. And it's so, so true, guys. You know, just remember that a dream is, is half a prophecy. Now I challenge you to go out and make it a reality. And, you know, I have my free ultimate guide on how to write an, uh, an illustrated children's book at eviejones.com slash fire. That's E-E-V-I jones 
facebook.com slash fire. And for the first five that come over, they can schedule a free 30 minute call with me to talk about, um, yes, the children's <laughs> book they always wanted to write, where they can ask me any questions they may have about the book creation and publishing process. That is such an amazing offer. Thank you for making that, Evie. And Fire Nation, get over there, eviejones.com slash fire. Be one of the first five to get that 30-minute chat with Evie. Girl's got some genius going on. And Evie believes in you, Fire Nation. I believe in you. You, Fire Nation, are somebody's hero. You are somebody's hero. They just don't know it yet because you just haven't started yet. So start, become that person's hero. And of course, head over to eofire.com. If you type E-E-V-I, Evie, in the search bar, her show notes page is going to pop up with everything we've talked about today, links to her book, which of course is how to self-publish your children's book. Go directly there as well. And obviously go directly to eviejones.com slash fire. Be one of the first five. Be an action taker, Fire Nation. And Evie, thank you for sharing your journey with Fire Nation today. For that, we salute you and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you so much, John. Hey, Fire Nation. Hope you enjoyed our chat with Evie today. I just love when I have a guest that just has so much passion and such a cool niche, awesome stuff. And if you're ready, Fire Nation, to finally master productivity, discipline, and focus, and do it in 100 days, well, then visit themasteryjournal.com. Use promo code podcast as a little thank you for listening to my podcast. And I will catch you there, Fire Nation, or I'll see you on the flip side. Looking for a website that can help you crowdsource design projects quickly and easily? Whether you're looking for custom graphics, a new logo, or even a brand new web design, DesignCrowd has you covered. Visit designcrowd.com slash fire for a special $100 VIP offer for Fire Nation, or simply enter the discount code FIRE when posting your next project on DesignCrowd. That's D-E-S-I-G-N-C-R-O-W-D dot com slash fire.